Okay, so welcome for welcome to lecture four. So uh, let me just uh, take few moments uh, so that things don't appear disjointed. Ultimately, I'll tell you what we are trying to do. We are trying to get to understand real E versus K diagram, and you will notice that I've been stressing this conductivity business, how conduction happens, etc. You think sort of a little bit side business, but of course important. But all along in trying to explain that we are developing some ideas. I have shown you k vector, origin of k vector in free electron theory, which is a wave vector. I have shown you that this k vector also means, means momentum. We have energy versus k relationship. We want to plot this E k diagram. Eventually as we go along, I will show you that E k diagram has contains all the information you require for electron dynamics. It tells us the properties of material. It tells us whether it is a good optical material, which is what the subject of this course is or it is not. How things become uh, the semiconductors, etcetera, etcetera are all connected to this, which we will be covering in this course. So, ultimately or at this point of time, my goal is to make sure that you understand what E k diagram is. When I show you the real E k diagram, it will be a complicated messy diagram. In next therefore, two, three lectures or four lectures, what I am going to do is slowly build up the case which explains how, what is the justification for drawing the real E k diagram which I will be showing you little bit later. Interim which you I am trying to build up through conductivity understanding of why we are introducing each idea. We have gone up to free electron theory and we have shown you that free electron theory does not explain everything because it does not have a idea of lattice underneath. So, what we are going to do is now explain lattice. Given a lattice, I will show you that I will also explain reciprocal lattice and its sole purpose would or main purpose would be that you will see that this k vector lies in reciprocal space. Its dimension is inverse of length. So, imagine a, a, a space in which uh, all the scales are in inverse of length. So, reciprocal lattice vectors would lie in that space and they will play important role and that role I will show you. That ro the role reciprocal lattice vectors, not the reciprocal lattice by itself, but reciprocal, reciprocal lattice vectors which we will have will be useful in constructing the E k diagram. That is why we want to introduce these two ideas at this point of time. Eventually what I will do is and remember in free electron theory, we also did not put any potential. We said it is free electron that means, it does not see other other ions, it does not see any potential because of that. We made the V equal term equal to 0, but eventually really that is not correct. The because there is a underlying lattice, we should have a potential and that potential should be periodic, having periodicity of the lattice. We will have to introduce that and when we introduce that, some remarkable things will happen and you will be able to understand why some materials are metal, why some materials are insulator and why some materials are semiconductor which free electron theory cannot do. Remember, it is really good for only metals, but because metals is where there is a hope for electron to be free electron. Other places it will not be free electron and there you will start seeing the semiconducting behavior also. So, that is the reason we are trying to move in this direction and this lattice and crystal structure and reciprocal lattice uh, is a review, uh, review uh, I am just going to review so that I take along all the students, but I expect most of you to have seen this before. So, therefore, I will go a little fast and only pick only in the relevant portion. So, this is a review to this lecture number 4 is a review lecture on lattice and crystal structure and reciprocal lattice. I will just take the fundamentals here and not great details in here. Okay. So, more this will be a dialogue, this will more of a question asked, answer given, question asked, answer given that is how we will produce, uh, uh, that is how we will uh, move along on these two topics today. All right. So, let us do that. So, first question asked, what is a point lattice? That is the first question we are going to ask. What is a point lattice? Well, point lattice, remember first what is a lattice or point lattice? First of all, remember lattice is not crystal structure, lattice is imaginary array of points. It is just imaginary array of points. You think of points arranged in space, you think of not actually put something there, but you just think of them as some points in space. Let me give you an example. Let us say here, 
here are some points let me draw these points somewhere here like this like this like this like this like this etc we draw something like this what do you see what you see is that if each point any if you take any point and that point looks identical if i take this point and i stand here and look in particular direction and then i move out and, and i see my environment how the environment looks like if we go to another point let us say this let's say this point and look in the same direction as i was looking from here and i find exactly same environment same arrangement of points around here that means each point in this imaginary point is a indistinguishable point any direction you look at on any point i mean you look at particular direction not that you can in each direction the view is same in each direction the view may be different but if you pick a direction then you stand on any point you will see the same view the arrangement of points will look the same that's really the definition of point lattice so this is a example of point lattice where if you stand here then you see something of a you can see this is the orientation if you stand here you see the same orientation if you stand here you see the same orientation you see the same orientation uh, in at this point any of these points you see the same arrangement of points if you see here you see a point here if you stand here you see a corresponding point here if you stay say here you see a corresponding similar point here if you stand here then you see a corresponding similar point right here from here to here from here to here or from here to here you see some points are appear they are identical points the orientation is identical a, a example a counter example may be uh, arrangement of points which is something like this let me see if i can draw a nice picture i'll attempt to first draw some pictures not the points i'll draw some pictures just hold on for with me, for a minute with me and then we will see i'll give you example where which is a bad, which will not be a point lattice okay now i think you can safely assume what i'm trying to draw and hence con continuously imagine this and think of these as the points these imaginary array of points so remember not all regular regular arrangement lead to point lattice that example you can see from here it's a nice regular arrangement of points which you can see this is a beautiful arrangement but notice that if you pick this particular location if you see then you see a atom in this or a point in this direction not atom a point a point in this direction you see a point in this direction but if you stand somewhere else another point let us say you you stand at uh, this point point what do you see in this case there's a lattice point in this direction there's a lattice point in this direction clearly the red type of lattice point this red lattice point is quite different has a different environment from the lat from the lattice point which is which is black in color so clearly you can see that this cannot be a point lattice though it's a regular arrangement of points okay so that's one one thing about the uh, what i want to tell you then what so point lattice this is a point lattice not a point lattice okay so now let's look at what are the symmetry elements which are underlying these point lattices so let's talk about symmetry the basic basic the four basic uh, the uh, basic symmetry elements that can be seen in a point lattice one is of course this uh, reflection that means if you have 
um, let's say to give it, let's give do an example. Let's say something like this. Uh, imagine this lattice, and in this you imagine a plane which is looking something like this. Imagine this plane. Imagine this plane. About this plane, you can see that this point. About this plane, if you reflect this point, there's a lattice point. This kind of symmetry is about a plane. That is, if there's a mirror plane, that there's a mirror plane. So I've drawn a red mirror plane such that one half coincides with the other half as mirror reflection. So if every point which appears on this side, let us say this one, this point right here, if there's a mirror image of that always on the other side, then this is the this is a reflection symmetry. Similarly, we can think of this rotation symmetry. This kind of symmetry is about an axis. So, let us try to draw an axis and show you in a cube what this would be. Let us say that we draw similarly a cube again. This is a cube. Let us look at some axes in this. Let us imagine an axis which runs like this. Right through the center, it runs like this. This is the axis. Imagine this axis right going through the center here and here. What do you, what, what do you see? You see a four fold axis. If you rotate this 90 degrees, if you rotate 90 degrees, you will find that if you rotate 90 degrees, then you will find that this point reaches this point. 90 degree, if you rotate it 90 degree, the lattice looks the same. That is the rotation symmetry. Similarly, you can see a three fold rotation axis if you wish. I can show you a three fold rotation axis along the body diagonal. So, if you look at this, take this point and this point along these points, if I draw a body diagonal like this, like this, and you notice the try rotating about this, this is a three fold. If you rotate it around it, you will see a three fold rotation axis. That means, if you rotate it around uh, above, uh, by 120 degrees, then you will generate basically the same structure essentially. So, this is a if you therefore, it is called an n fold axis, a three fold axis, and a four fold axis I have shown you. So, there could be a two fold axis, there could be three fold axis, there could be four fold axis, there could be six fold axis, but there cannot be a five fold axis. Think about that quasi crystals or some you have to think about. Then, another kind of symmetry element is inversion. That is a point is an inversion center if every point in the lattice reproduces another lattice point equidistant from the inversion center on a line joining these two lattice points and also passing through the inversion center. So, you imagine like this it is instead of a mirror plane, it is a mirror point. So, if I every if I stand in there in a corner in the center of the room, I look at one of the corners and if I reflect about this point. Uh, 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 if I if I uh, if I per uh, perpendicular to this, if I reflect or rather I should say if I join these two points and continue the same distance in the other direction, then I will generate another point. If I do find a lattice point there and this happens for all the points, then it is a inversion center. For example, let us draw one again a cube and show through a cube that inversion center in it. Uh, so, this is a cube I am drawing here and let us say if we put an inversion center right in the center of it, then you imagine that I have a lattice point here, then whatever the distance I start joining these two points, I join these two points and I continue on this point at equal amount of distance what I have just drawn and then if I do that and I find that I land up on another lattice position and that should happen for all the points. A point is an inversion center, every point on the lattice reproduces another lattice point. So, every point should be able to do that. So, corresponding to this point, I will get another point here, corresponding to this point, I will get another point here, so on and so forth. So, this structure has a inversion symmetry, there is a point of inversion symmetry, inversion center in there. Okay. Rotation inversion, a same idea, essentially it is a combination of rotation and inversion symmetry. This symmetry operation is a combination of rotation, that is lattice is first, uh, lattice is reproduced. If you give a n fold rotation, whatever the rotation axis is, n fold rotation axis is, if you give a rotation, it may not match at this stage, but then there should be also inversion symmetry and then if you invert, you use the inversion symmetry, then you may be able to generate a lattice. Um, example, maybe I draw another example here through a cube uh, for this case. So, this is this case, this is this case, this is this case. So, I draw another case, another, another thing um, right here. I do not know how 
how good this drawing will turn out to be, but nonetheless we have an attempt. A cube for example, let us say a center right here, here is the center and let us draw a remember the four fold rotation axis, a four fold rotation axis and, uh, and this is also a inversion center. So, this is the inversion center and this is a four fold rotation axis. So, let us trace a point, what happens? Let us say that I have a point right here. So, I have a point here. Now, what do we want to do? That we want to produce a n fold rotation. So, four fold rotation we are going to do this about this axis. About this axis, when I do a four fold rotation, I go rotation like this 90 degrees I do. So, then where do I reach? Let me show you by this color. So, we reach here, we reach here, we, I, I reach here. This may be lattice point, this may not be lattice point, does not matter. But after that, we do a inversion symmetry and inversion symmetry and then I reproduce the I uh, about this point inversion symmetry, then I reach this point right here. Now, you see what this says that is that if you have a lattice point here, then a system if it has rotation inversion symmetry, then you would have a lattice point here also in here also. That is the rotation inversion symmetry operation as far as this is concerned. All right. So, these are the, there is the point lattice underlying these point lattice are these therefore, symmetry elements with these symmetry elements. Now, let me define, now define one more thing before I, uh, second question is uh, what is a unit cell? Third question is what is a unit cell? What is a unit cell? So, now we know that there is a periodic, it is a point lattice is a periodic lattice, the underlying symmetry elements. So, based on periodicity of the lattice, if you choose three vectors, non-collinear vectors, uh, then in that case, um, not all in same plane, then I can describe those three lattice vectors by A 1, A 2 and A 3 as three vectors. Sometimes you say A B C, does not matter, A 1, A 2, A 3 as the three vectors. Then I should be able to find position vectors, I should be able to position vectors of the points by r vector called n 1 a 1 plus n 2 a 2 plus n 3 a 3. That means, I should be able to reproduce all the points by taking n 1 n 2 integers n 1 n 2 n 3 integers. These are integers. So, I can take this and I should be able to get to another point. This is one way to look at it. Second thing is, say other way to look at it is that a 1, a 2, a 3, since the three non-collinear vectors, they are not, they are, therefore, they will construct a volume. Whatever the volume is, if you translate this by distances a 1, a 2 and a 3, then you should be able to fill up the complete space generating those lattice points. These are two ways you can think of unit cells. All right. So, there is a requirement of translation. That means, you translate, I will give you two dimensional example that will make things little bit clear. For example, let us say I have something a two dimensional lattice and you imagine this in three dimension something like this. In fact, let me make it little bit more complicated than I am drawing here, let us say like this. Okay. So, something like this, suppose this is a lattice, I choose this to be or use different color here. So, let us say this is what I choose as my unit cell, which is this a 1 vector, this is a 2 vector, let us say this is a 1 vector and a 2 vector right here like this here. So, a 1, a 2 vector define this area. Now, you notice that if I move this a 1, whatever area is constructed by a 1, a 2, we keep moving, we can generate all these lattice points, right. That is what, that is what is implied by a unit cell. So, this is a good unit cell. Now, so three vectors a 1, a 2, a 3. So, a 1, a 2, a 3 define a unit cell, they define a unit cell, they are not necessarily the smallest volume, which we will see. Uh, by changing 
the angles or distances size of uh, magnitude of a 1 a 2 a 3 or the angles between them there are seven types of as you, and this is something you know this, this is seven types of unit cells are possible the cubic the tetragonal the orthorhombic the rhombohedral so there is this uh, cubic um, tetragonal orthorhombic rhombohedral uh, hexagonal monoclinic and triclinic depending and increasingly see, uh, cubic system has the highest degree of symmetry elements and triclinic has uh, the, the least number of symmetry elements inherent in them. So, now these unit cells the way it works is in, in, in 1848 this French crystallographer call his name was uh, Brevis suggested based on the symmetry elements they can only be precisely 14 point lattices based on the symmetric in combination of uh, what we have looked at point what is definition of point lattice based on that definition of point lattice and the symmetry elements which are underlying these point lattice they can be exactly 14 Bravis lattices those Bravis lattices have been drawn in this in this picture and you are quite familiar with it something is called simple there is a simple cubic there is a body centered cubic there is a face centered cubic there is simple tetragonal there is a body centered tetragonal there is simple orthorhombic body centered orthorhombic uh, base centered orthorhombic, face centered orthorhombic, rhombohedral, hexagonal, simple monoclinic, base centered monoclinic, triclinic, these are the 14 Bravis lattices which I have drawn on this page here. So far so good and up to here I presume you all were uh, very well versed. Now, the point I want to make now is where things start and this is where you need to pay little bit attention and because this is where we are going to be uh, it may become slightly confusing for you that is where. So, let us look at this let me do this that if I take there is no fundamental way there is no requirement take let us take example let us take example like this in two dimension again. The choice of unit cell is yours how you choose your unit cell. For example, a person may choose the unit cell like this based on this a 1 and a 2 vector and you can always demand, Im imagine the third one also in three dimension it is easier for me to draw in two dimension. Another person may choose that no they are going to use this one as a 1 vector and this as a 2 vector which will in this case define a volume area which is like this will define an area which is like this other person may choose a, a, a something different in the sense that exactly opposite they may choose uh, this to be these two be to the vectors a 1 and a 2 let us say this is a 1 this is a 2 in which case this structure will now look like this unit cell will look something like this. All these are perfectly good unit cells and you notice their space filling you translate them along directions of a 1 and a 2 multiples of integers in in in, in uh, 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 you translate them by that means by if you move uh, by a by change a 1 by integer or a 2 by integer you will translate by that amount then you will fill the space and generate the lattice and does not matter which unit cell you choose there is no unique choice of uh, there is no unique choice of of these lattice vectors you are free to choose the way you want to choose. Of course, there is a simpler way of choosing and there is a difficult way of choosing which is why you see normally people choose like this which shows the square symmetry of this shows the square symmetry of this lattice. Though this particular this for example, this this or this lattice has exactly same symmetry, but for a person looking at it, it looks like a rhombus or a parallelogram something like that it looks like these unit cells look like a parallelogram or a rhombus they do not show symmetry of a square type lattice oh, sorry they have a they, oh, yes so it is not the square type symmetry is not obvious whereas that underlying symmetry indeed does exist because it is the same lattice after all. So, the choice of vectors you, you make is your choice sometimes some, some choices will make things easier some, and sometimes they are difficult. Nonetheless let me now move on and try to explain another aspect what is which is where what we will be interested in and next topic therefore, will be what is a next question would be what is a
what is a primitive cell. Okay, so, now let us take this by example. Now, notice that when we looked at cubic, if you looked at cubic, it came in three versions simple cubic. Let me draw one more cube first. So, for example, cubic lattice comes in, come in three versions lattice points, not atomic positions yet, not no atoms, just let imaginary lattice points here or here, 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 and one in the center or or in these corners and also face centers and one the front face. This is of course, face centered cubic, this is a body centered cubic and this is simple cubic. Notice that how many lattice points we have per unit cell. In this cell with atoms or, or lattice points only at the corners, I have one lattice point per cell, which means this is uh, uh, in this case we call this as primitive cell, you will recall that and then there is a body centered has two, this has one point, this has two points per unit cell and this has four lattice points per unit cell. So, definition of a primitive cell is one lattice point per unit cell. If you have one lattice point per unit cell, then it is called a primitive lattice. Clearly, simple cubic is the body centered cubic as shown, the unit cell shown is not a primitive unit cell, FCC as shown here is not a primitive cell but it is always possible to make a primitive cell out of any structure. Now, if I have a BCC or I have a FCC, I still need a primitive cell. It is always possible to do so and I will show you some, I will show you by some example. Let us assume considered BCC lattice. Let us choose vectors as A 1 as A x hat, A 2 as A y hat, A 3 as a by 2, a being the lattice parameter, edge length of all these uh, plus y plus z. Let us choose this as lattice, lattice vectors. What does it look like? Let me draw it for you and then it might become little bit clearer for you. So, let us assume that it is something like this. Let us assume this cube to be like this. This is a BCC. Now, if you choose your lattice vectors as follows, you choose, let me use another color now, use this as A1, you choose this as A1, you choose this as A2, A2, this is A1, and you choose one in the center, this is the atom in the center you choose that as a 3. So, what I am going to do is, I am going to draw an axis also. So, if you take an axis like this x, y. So, this is the y axis, this is the x direction and this is the z direction. Then remember what is a 1? a 1 is a times in x direction. So, I am choosing this as a 1, this as a 1 and a 2 is in y direction. So, I am choosing this as a 2 and then third center point, the body center point is selected as the A 3 vector, which is this vector. Now, this is A 3, this is the A 3 vector. So, if I choose the vectors to be like this, now you can notice that 
that whatever these three vectors will generate will be a volume which will not look like a cube, but it will have it will be since the lattice points will be only at the corners of this vector. Therefore, it will become a primitive vector prim primitive unit cell which will be defined by a 1, a 2 and a, a 3. If you wish you can find the volume of this we can find the volume of this particular uh, through the uh, enclosed by these vectors by taking a scalar product of it and you will find that this volume is half the volume of a cube. If we take BCC like this then the volume will here be a cube of course and if you calculate from here the scalar product you will find the volume to be a cube by 2 because now I have only one lattice point per unit volume. So, there will be half the volume only. Let me take another uh, another uh, set of another choice of uh, lattice vectors. So, set 1. So, this is set 1. Let us take set 2. Let us say a 1 choose something like this a by 2 y hat plus z hat minus x hat a 2 as equal to a by 2 z hat plus x hat minus y hat and a 3 as vector a by 2 uh, x hat plus y hat minus z hat. Let us suppose you choose vectors like this. You want to see this one? Let me draw this also for you and show you how this one would look like, how these vectors would look like. keep this big enough. I am trying to draw a cube though it look does not look like exactly a cube, but nonetheless uh, bear with me and use little bit of imagination also in here only then it will probably work. So, I have point here, I have point here, I have point here, I have point here. A point here, point here, point here, lattice point here, and one lattice point, of course, is there in the center also. There is lattice point in the center also. But now, notice what I have done. This, what I have done is that if you choose, let us say, let us choose our axis. So, that this is x, this is x, this is this is y, and this is z, this is z going up z. Suppose this is the y direction, this is the y direction this is the x direction and this is the z direction is how we are pursuing on this. Okay. So, if this is the case let us draw this how does these how do these vectors look like what you will find is remember there are always going to be a point there is another going to they are going, they're going to be let me draw it with blue ink probably there is going to be another body centered point right here which is belongs to another unit cell which comes out like this which is another unit another there is another unit cell which comes like this maybe this drawing is getting messy messy messy. So, we remove this all this and I will leave this to your imagination actually. So, probably easier that way. Okay. So, let us do this let us do it this way that you imagine that there is a unit cell right here another unit cell which continues here on on this you consider this face and out of this face out of this face further you see another unit cell at the center of it would be another lattice point. So, that lattice point I am going to draw right here. I am going to draw that lattice point right here. Similarly, and this lattice point when joined with this you can see this vector is a 1 vector a 1 vector. That means, on the y and the z phase center point, but in x phase in x direction go negative direction and if you go in a negative direction that means, you are coming out of this phase and you will find, find a lattice point. Similarly, on a 2 for a 2 vector what you do is do the same thing you look at the z and x phase z and x phase and then you go out of that cell and out of cell z and the phase which is formed by z this particular you will imagine this particular plane this is z x phase which is now given by z and x and minus y in y direction you move in minus half half the distance in y direction. So, if you do that direction then you locate this point outside on this face a body center point. Similarly, and the in the in this case for a 3 vector you see x and y plane the bottom plane you take the bottom plane and go down for the below. So, this will be your a 2 vector this will be a 2 vector and going down below there will be a 3 vector this is bad sort of little bit bad drawing, but if you draw this particular 
then what you will have is, you will have is, now you can imagine, if you wish, uh, there is a BCC cell. In this BCC cell, you can think like this, there is a lattice point which has been taken. Uh, now, if you, the unit cell will look much more like this one. This is how the unit cell will look like, the shaded one. You can imagine this to be in context, uh, let us see, uh, you, if you if you've taken the, the center to be somewhere here, then you can go one out. This cell, you can see unit cell is in three direction is coming out. And this clearly does not look like a body centered. If you take this lattice vectors, then this is how you have to little bit do imagination. This is how the unit cell looks like. And if the unit cell looks like this, and its volume again will be half of what a cube is, because now they are going to be only going to be only one lattice point per unit cell. And where are those lattice points? Those lattice points will only be at the corners. These are the going to be the lattice points. And therefore, you can clearly see that this is a primitive unit cell. So, it is always possible to make a primitive unit cell out of any, whether it is BCC, FCC or any cell, they are always possible to make a primitive cell and there is no unique way of making primitive cell. For case of BCC, I have shown you two ways of making primitive cell and eventually you will see, we will use this particular definition of uh, lattice vectors for primitive cell. Okay, so, now this uh, BCC primitive cell I have shown you. I, I mean, I have given you this set two vectors here, right here, and uh, I have shown you the structure of it. You try, please try drawing it yourself, because it does not quite look uh, so nice, but nonetheless, uh, believe me, it is uh, proper BCC cell, does not show BCC symmetry, which is why it is BCC always drawn some different way, but it is always possible to make a primitive cell like this. And these primitive cells are the ones which we use in analysis. So, these are the vectors which we will use. I promise in case of FCC, I will show you a little bit better picture. Okay, Let us use FCC. FCC, now you see FCC has four lattice point per unit cell. So, let us see how that, that looks like. Let me first give the cell uh, lattice vectors to you. Let us say A 1 choice I make one way is, of course, you make a 1, a 2, a 3 as uh, conventional, conventional null cell will have a 1 as a times x, a 2 as a uh, y and a 3 as a z, which is same for b c c also, just that there is a point at the face centers also in this case. Right, and you construct a unit cell using this and use that as a repeating unit, then you can generate FCC and with having four lattice point per unit cell. But primitive cell, primitive cell, let us construct a primitive cell. Let me show you how one can make a primitive cell from a FCC also. Let us by choosing, let us say I choose A1 as equal to A by 2 y hat z and a 2 as equal to a by 2 z and a 3 as equal to a by 2 x plus y. So, you choose our primitive cell like this. Let me draw this for you this time little bit better. So, here I have shown you, here I have shown you, I am going to move here and show you this unit cell first. So, here is uh, here is a FCC unit cell, a cube and this red points which you see here are the corner points. And as we go along, I have shown you two FCC and then I have shown you three FCC points, one blue, one green and one yellow. And I am going to show you and I have not shown the other uh, on this face, this particular face is the blue point. These three points I have shown the face centered points, but I have not shown you face center points on other places, just so that the figure does not go uh, start looking bad. So, that is nonetheless, you can imagine those points. So, let me move back here and let me draw this, these vectors for you. So, if I choose my orientation, uh, uh, if I choose my origin to be like this, so if I choose my z to be like this, this direction uh, or I uh, make it from here itself. So, I do it like this, z is this direction and this direction as I have drawn it and one direction here, one direction here, then this is x direction and this is y direction and this is z direction. Accordingly, let us see now what a 1 is. If I look at a 1, so a 1 will correspond to uh, a 1 will correspond to my blue. So, if I take uh, a 1 is in y and z plane. So, if I take this blue plane 
right here, this is the blue plane here, this particular plane and the phase center of it. So, therefore, this is the a 1 vector. So, this is the a 1 vector, a 1 vector and now, if I look at the a 2 vector, a 2 vector is in z and x plane, uh, z and x plane. So, that is the one which will be which will be given by this uh, green stuff. So, I will let me draw the green one. So, if I consider this plane, this front plane, if I consider this front front plane, then I can construct this vector. This is the phase center point of this on this plane. This is a 2 vector, a 2 vector and similarly, if I take the bottom plane a 3, where it is in x y plane. So, if I take this one, then it is on the yellow plane. So, if I take this bottom plane right here, if I take this bottom plane and in the phase center point is right here, then this is a 3, this is a 3. Now, see what does it construct? What, what do you get these 3? If I choose these 3 vectors, what do I get? What you can get now is, I am showing you the 3 vectors as these are the 3 vectors right here, this one, this one and this one are those 3 vectors. If you have these are the 3 vectors and you construct a volume out of it, then you get a nice structure like this which is shown here and you can see that this is a primitive cell with lattice points right here, 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 right here. Of course, these two, uh, let me draw use another pen, this point and this point are the two corner points of this FCC lattice, which may be my marker red. I mark them in this red. The rest of the points are all face centered points. The rest of the points are all face centered points. This on the top, the face center point on the bottom, here the face center on the front, here the face center point on the back, here the face center on the right, here the face center point on the left. So, there are the face centered points. Now, if you calculate the volume of this cell, it will be exactly one fourth of a cube. A cube was a conventional cell which with a volume of whole cube had a volume of a cube, but since this is and that would have 4 lattice point per unit volume. If you now calculate, calculate the scalar pro, using the scalar product of these 3 vectors, you calculate the volume, you will get one fourth the volume, but this is a nice primitive cell. Before I end on this subject on primitive cell, then I ask you one, one I show you another kind of primitive cell, which is called as Wigner seed cell. So, last topic in this crystal structures is this Wigner seed cell, another way of making a primitive lattice is as follows. Take for example, this BCC, take this as primitive cell, this is also a primitive cell. Let me first make it in two dimension maybe to show you the to make the point. Suppose, I take a square lattice in two dimension like this. And instead of choosing a primitive lattice like this, primitive unit cell in two dimension like this, which I could. Another way to choose this will be like this. And this particular cell, which I have shown you by red right here has one lattice point per cell, because lattice points are only in the corner. If I take this one, I can choose another way of choosing a lattice point is like this. If I choose my unit cell to be like this, if I choose the unit cell to be like this, notice this also has only one lattice point. Now, the lattice points are not at the corner, but this is also a repeating unit. If I repeat this unit, I generate the whole, this is also a good unit cell. This only lattice point is in the center, there is no other lattice point and this is only this is also a primitive lattice cell the la, uh, primitive unit cell because it has one lattice point per unit cell exactly same thing can be done for different crystal structures for example take this bcc example imagine this to be one cube here is one cube take this one cube here right here take this one particular cube here Draw the, take this one cube. Now, if you know, you know that that you have a one lattice point right in the center. From that center, draw lines to all other lattice points. Take perpendicular bisectors of them, and what is left then is this kind of structure which is shown here. You take perpendicular bisectors, bisectors, and find what is the smallest volume. 
so you from the center point you draw lines to all other lattice points all other lattice points draw planes which are perpendicular uh, 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 draw planes which are perpendicular to these lines right in the center of the two point whatever the line is joining two point two lattice points right in the center of it or center of this line draw a perpendicular plane keep drawing it like this for all the lines you can possibly draw and construct the smallest volume and construct the smallest volume in case of BCC clearly as the geometry shows you that if I have a, I have a center uh, let us take example I have a center point I have a center point here is this line and this is the perpendicular bisector for it this is a plane which is the perpendicular bisector for it which intersects at this particular point here and then I make the smallest volume like this then what you have is a primitive cell because the only thing which is in there is a uh, cent point one point in the center then that is called a Wigner seat cell. Similarly, it is done here for FCC you can now imagine that on this face cell, conventional cells this is the one of the face of the cube on this face right in the center will be a face centered point from this face center point you draw perpendicular bisectors to all other points which are there. For example, you draw from here a perpendicular bisector to um, uh, uh, the, the top face like this and it intersects here and you construct this plane and in, on this in plane it intersects right here and in this way you construct this particular volume this also Wigner seed cell right in the center is a, a lattice point. Why am I talking about this particular cell because this will become a interesting point this is precisely the kind of cell we will be looking for in reciprocal lattice. Okay, so, with this I would like to close the chapter on this uh, uh, crystal structures uh, or lattices, but last point maybe I should say what is crystal structure because I have not said crystal structure that I will not go through, but crystal structure is simply lattice plus a basis. That means, on all the lattice points which you have you start putting now atoms and whatever the basis is one single atom, two atoms, multiple atoms, whichever you want to put it that generates a crystal structure. And I will advise you that please brush up your knowledge, knowledge on this crystal structures and also look at uh, also brush up a little bit on the directions and planes in this crystal structures which we will frequently use and you may be useful. But in the summary what we want to do is in summary there is a point lattice, there is a point lattice, there is underlying symmetry in the point lattice based on that there are exactly 14 Bravis lattices possible some are primitive some are not primitive whichever are not primitive it is always possible to make a primitive lattice primitive lattice has one lattice point per unit cell and primitive lattices are often used in analysis which we will do shown here is for BCC then shown here is for FCC a primitive lattice but there is another construct for primitive cell which is a Wigner seed cell this Wigner seed cell here may not be too much import, uh, of importance at least for us, but this will become same construction in reciprocal space would become lot more important. So, this is where I would like to finish the topic of crystal structures and move on to what is called as reciprocal lattice now. Intro, in, introduce this topic and then finish in the next lecture. So, here is reciprocal lattice let us start with this. So, now notice a direct lattice we will use the word direct lattice in contrast we have a direct lattice what we just did was direct lattice. So, for this direct lattice I will write a lattice vector r which is uh, we will use the symbol n 1 a 1 plus n 2 a 2 plus n 3 a 3 and I will always use a primitive lattice which means let us go back for BCC for, for let us go back and look at this BCC that means I am going to use A 1, A 2 and A 3 like here. I will choose A 1, A 2, A 3. Similarly, if I take in FCC I will choose my lattice vectors A 1, A 2, A 3 to be like this if I choose my lattice vectors in this fashion I generate this structure and remember in this case if I generate if I change n 1, n 2 and n 3 like I am drawing here like I am drawing here if I change choose values of n 1, n 2, n 3 I will all integer values of n 1, n 2 and n 3 with this choice of a 1, a 2 and a 3 
since it is primitive because the uh, because the points lie only on the corner of the unit cell on the uh, corners of the unit cell. Therefore, by choosing n 1, n 2 and n 3 this is a lattice vector by which I can generate all the lattice points by choosing n 1, n 2, n 3. If I choose n 1, n 2, n 3 as 0 then all 0 then I start with some point that is a lattice point and then I keep choosing n 1 equal to 1, n 2 0, n 3 I will get another lattice point and I will keep doing if it is not primitive cell then you will not be able to generate all the lattice point by choosing n 1, n 2, n 3 as integers, but because it is a primitive cell then r is truly a lattice, uh, uh, lattice vector which will generate all the lattice points. Now, similarly I am going to do is I am going to just write some expression some, some vectors now. First I am going to do is this I am going to write b 1 vector which I am going to write 2 pi divided by 8 sorry multiplied by a 3 cross product of a 2 and a 3 divided by volume of I will show you what volume of a primitive cell of this particular primitive cell. I will write b 2 vector just do not worry just think that something being written what it is I will see what it is a 3 into a 1 cross product divided by same v p and I will write b 3 as equal to 2 pi by v p um, volume of this um, a 1 cross a 2 I am going to just write it like this and I am going to construct a vector called k this vector as m 1 b 1 plus m 2 b 2 plus m 3 b 3 in fact let me write this as succinctly as n i a i and this as therefore m i uh, b i where i of course is 1 2 3 i is 1 2 3 only all right. So, this is k vector I am writing and v p in this case is and the v p is just the scalar product a 1 dot a 2 cross a 3 is the scalar product which gives me which gives me the volume of the primitive cell. So, if I take so, so if I ask what is the primitive cell constructed by if I construct a primitive cell with this vector a 1, a 2, a 3 are vectors which construct the primitive cell one wants to know what is the volume of the primitive cell in the direct lattice then this volume is just simply this quantity this quantity v p volume of the primitive cell. So, I have divided this vo by volume of primitive cell and then I generate a vector called k based on this where m 1, m 2, m 3 now are integers what happens and why are we doing this is basically the story what it means. Recall, recall our wave function had a form of e to power j k dot r that is the form recall uh, wave function which we had derived in free electron theory had this form right and also I mean this is a plane wave form essentially. Now, what we want is what we want is that phi of r phi we what what we want is that e to power j k r dot product r plus r should become equal to e to power j k dot r. Why? See this represents the periodicity of the lattice that in the lattice if you move by this vector r then you essentially are at the same point this is the definition of point lattice remember. So, if you move from one point to another point by this translation vector r then the lattice looks identical there is no difference in it. So, we want we and then since we are going to deal with properties in this kind of lattice then since these points are not different they are identical then the behavior of anything should also look similar. So, if I my wave function has this form then it should also acquire same character at those some, some special points. So, this is why we want that this to happen because that we want that there should be periodicity in a of r in wave function also which can happen only which can happen only if you can see that that means e to power j k dot r should be equal to 1 
small k I have drawn, let me erase this, small k dot r should be equal to 1. If, if this happens, then this will be true, then this particular thing will be true in there. All right. Now, notice for all k's which are like our capital K which we have just derived, here is the capital K, here is the capital K which we have just derived and this capital K which we have just derived, if we substitute this particular capital K, capital K for all small k's in here equal to this capital K, this is indeed true. This is indeed true. So, that is what essentially, essentially we would like to do here that if you do, if you for some special values of k, k remember is a reciprocal space. Now, if you look at the dimension of this quantity b1, b2, and b3, then it is also inverse of length. Remember a cross a2 cross a3 divided by a volume. So, therefore, that is also uh, inverse of length. So, the k clearly small k clearly this capital K vector clearly belongs to a reciprocal space as do our uh, this small k vector uh, indeed belongs to small k vector we know it belongs to reciprocal space and so does capital K. If these two become equal then this relationship this relationship which is shown here becomes true. So, this is the reason why we have generated this k vector in a form as we have and you please try that you uh, substitute in here. In, 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 in this expression substitute is, uh, capital K in there and see indeed if it gets 1 or not by choosing B 1, B 2, B 3 as we have. That is a small part of the story, but if you are familiar with this, you can see that if this is true in, in the plane waves, I can form a complete set, I can do a Fourier analysis and lot, uh, for all periodic functions, I would be able to do Fourier analysis. Any function which has periodicity of capital R, then I would in this case, this is a really good set to do Fourier Fourier analysis. That is essentially what it means, but I will not and that is what we do for x-ray diffractions etcetera, but in this course we will not go through it. We will just since my intention is to show you what is consequence how to represent E k diagram. So, I will limit my discussion only to that. We will continue on this part uh, since now I have constructed b 1, b 2, b 3 as vectors just like a 1, a 2, a 3 a 1, a 2, a 3 construct from a 1, a 2, a 3 we could construct a primitive lattice. Similarly, with b 1, b 2, b 3, these vectors in reciprocal space, we should be able to construct an another set of lattice in reciprocal lattice and those we will call as reciprocal lattice constructed by b 1, b 2, b 3, which we will start in the next lecture. Thank you.